Welcome to Pixel Composer 1.16.4. This version comes with a bunch of new nodes and some very interesting features. So let's get through it. One big project by feature is the ability to add in working range to your animation. You go to the animation summary in the bottom area here. You can right click and you will be able to set the start and end of your working range. You can click on set start and then go to the set end. Now when you press play, your cursor will only go in between the working range and your animation like the export node or the render node will adjust its frame range according to your working range. Now when you're working with some simulation node like the rigid body node that require you to run from the first frame, you will see that the working range will now look differently. And that's because when you press play, you will see that it will actually start from the first frame until it go to the end, but then it's gonna come back to the starting range. So now let's cover the new nodes. The first node here you can find in the animation category is the stagger node. And this node works with an image array or an animation array which allows you to delay each of the animation by the index of its array. So when you have an animation that looks like this for example, and then you send it to the stagger node, you will see that now the resulting animation, each of the animation will be delayed the, the further away it is, the slower it's gonna get. And then you can use node like stack node to put all the image array together to create a stagger animation. And with the stacker node come the array rearrange node. With the stacker node, the order of the image in the array now matter a lot. You set in an array and then you can rearrange it directly from the interface to create a new one. And another animation related node is the delay node, which allows you to delay an animation by a number of frames. However, with both delay and the stacker node, you can only delay or extend the animation forward in time. You cannot make a negative frame delay because with how the pixel composer renders the delay node cannot read information that doesn't exist yet. Next is the override channel node which allow you to, as I suggest, override the channel in your image with another image. In the previous version you want to, for example, have an image and you want to only change the alpha of that image based on another alpha map like this, then you have to do RGB extract and then RGB combine. Not only it needs two nodes, it also requires a bunch of connection that can be kinda annoying. So in this node, you can only require one connection. You provide the original image and then you can select what channel you want to replace it by. Next is the diffuse node. So in the previous version, we have reaction diffusion node that simulates the reaction between two different chemicals. And this node works similarly to that one. First, you need to have feedback loop, but it only simulates the diffusion of one chemical in a way. So it will be uh, easier to understand and similar to control. You can use it to create like fake soap animation. The next node is an image grid node. In the previous version, if you want to render an image array as a grid, you need to use render sprite sheet and set the input as an array mode. So this new image grid node is aimed to fix all of those problems, but it also only accepts image array. And next is a slope blur node, which is a node that allows you to blur an image depending on the slope map. So when you have a slope map, which is a grayscale scale map that looks something like this, you're gonna see that there are some slope from brighter pixel to the darker pixel. With a linear gradient like this, when you use it as a slope map, you're gonna say that the resulting blur is similar to the directional blur. But you can also provide any kind of grayscale map. It allows you to achieve some interesting effect. And the next group of nodes will be related to part. The first one is the smooth part node, which is a part creation node similarly to the normal part. But instead of using control point like the Bezier curve, this one only requires one single point. So in the node 2, you're gonna see that there's only one anchor, add and delete. And you can use the smooth deck controller to control how smooth your point is going to be. And the next node is a bridge part node. This node will allow you to create a new part that bridge in between a part in the part array. Like in this example, we have array of three parts. And then we use bridge part, you can see that if you generate a new part that connect between all three of them, you can control the amount or part that you want to create. And the next one is the map part, which allow you to map a surface onto an array of part. Like in this example, you can use the same three parts, then you can send in a surface, and the surface will try to map from the first one to the second one and the third one. And the last node is a back part node which allow you to sample a number of points from a part into an array of vector 2 points. Now that's all for the new node. So in the previous version, I've introduced a mappable parameter. Now it's also come to gradient value as well. In some of the supported gradient, you're gonna see this mapping icon in the end. Clicking on it will allow you to provide a new surface to use as a gradient map. And when you enable gradient mapping, you will see that in the preview panel, there will be new gradient map range controller we should allow you to control which line you want to sample the gradient from. Then we have an improvement to an already existing node. The first one is the canvas node. This one is more of a user interface improvement. I have moved the brush properties like the brush size, brush color, the fill threshold to the preview panel itself. So you're not gonna see it in inspector anymore. The brush color can be selected from the tool panel and the brush size can be selected on the tool setting on top. 
and the color selector will be based on the default palette that you are selecting. So you can click on the color selector, right click on the palette you want, and then select set as default, which will make that palette show up in the color selector. Next is the scatter node. The first is there's some performance improvement. There are also more options to do with surface array as well. You can use the index of the repeated object as an array index. Uh, you can use direct data, so you can provide an array of index directly. Or you can use texture mode, which allows you to provide a texture to control the array index. There's also more control over the uniform distribution. You'll be able to control directly how many objects in each row and column. And if you use circle shapes, you'll be able to control the repetition in polar coordinate. There's also a new positional wiggle properties which allow you to wiggle or move each image in the repetition randomly. The draw text node also got an update which allows you to trim the text inside the node itself. The shape node also get global rotational properties and some rotation property to the crescent node at the new donut shape. The draw gradient node also have an option to enable uniform aspect ratio for a circular and radial pattern. There are also a new ping pong mode for a loop properties. The render sprite sheet node also got some change that allow the node to render in the normal playback. The level selector have an option to retain the original colors. The particle and the VFX border node have a new option to use scale as an array index. So you can have an array of a sprite in a different scale and then select this option to prevent Pixel Composer from scaling the image directly which can cause some artifact. The part node also got some UI improvement which allow you to see the resulting part easier. You can also adjust the part anchor while selecting other nodes. The web part got some improvement which allow you to add wiggle to the amplitude and control amplitude over length. The lower node also got some slight rework which allow the node to compile automatically. So now it doesn't require manual comp compilation and doesn't have the error notification like before. The grid and tie nodes also got a texture rotation properties which allow you to rotate the texture randomly. And the 3D cameras and camera set also get new additive blending mode. Now next would be the interface improvement. Now you may already seen this in the earlier part of the video, but the control gizmo now show the label of the property name that it is controlling. You can now use right click to cancel value manipulation when you're using the text box, the slider, or the rotator. The animation panel will now show frame index beyond your project limit. The preview frame index also used one indexing so that the first frame will now be the frame 1 instead of frame 0 so it match with the animation timeline. And the pop-up text area also get a scroll bar and as usual here is a list of the bugs fixed in this version. And that will be all for today's video so thanks for watching and see you in the next one.